All right, welcome back to another episode of Beer, Bacon, and Bros. Tonight you got uh, what I'll just call the normal cast at this point. You got Adam, you got Chris, and you got Keith. We are back for our week 11 college football picks. If you've been following us, we've done uh, 10 games a week for the first 10 weeks of the season, or I guess 11 weeks because we did week zero too. And yeah, that's, uh, that's when the numbers are a little off. Yeah, and so right now you have <laughs> Keith in the lead. He actually made up a whole game on the crowd. Last week at 70 and 37. You haven't spent a single money on gambling yet, but you're 70 and 37. I guess I need to start so, gambling. I need to, I need to hook up with you and Bubba. Uh, you and I are tied at, no, actually, yeah, sorry. I'm 60, yeah, 69 38. You're 68 39. And Alex, a whole five games back of you right now. You're going to be pretty good. Second time tip right there. Uh, he is going to be uh, kind of backed up against the wall in the next couple of weeks. He's going to have bowl pickums and championship week to help him out if he doesn't catch up some ground over the next two weeks. But uh, we are hopping into 10 games as always. You know we're going to pick them out. So our first game of the week, we'll start with Adam. We have Wyoming and UNLV. This is the 6-3 and three Cowboys against the, uh, I can't remember what their mascot is, UNLV. Rebels. Rebels, yeah. yeah. I'll um, take, um, yeah, you're right. I'm going to take UNLV here. Wow, without hearing the line or anything? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, well, I looked at this line earlier. Oh, okay. So the UNLV Rebels are six and a half point favorites. So, yeah, I'm going to take UNLV here. Yeah, I'm going to call a suit with Adam, too. The last time I chose Wyoming, they got their asses destroyed. So, I think UNLV's had a, had a good team all year. They played Fresno really well, if I'm not, not mistaken. Yeah, they lost by a touchdown to Fresno. You know, Fresno's leading that division. Fresno's a really good team. Yeah. Um, to, only, to only lose by a touchdown to, to, you know, to the eventual probably winner of that conference, you know, pretty good. Uh, the game they lost, oh, yeah, Wyoming went against, against, against Boise, Boise was the one that, I, yeah, the, I think we all went Wyoming on, or most of us did. Yeah. Um, um, Boise just destroyed them, so, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the Rebs here, too. Oh, this sucks, because I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go Wyoming. I, I like the feel-good story, um, with UNLV, obviously, I mean, you're talking about a team that was like a two-win team last year, all of a sudden turned seven and two right now um you know josh allen's not wyoming anymore yeah right? yeah i do know josh okay. allen's not wyoming just, just making anymore, sure so just, just making sure um so i'll, I'll stick with the cowboys they're three into a <laughs> conference i think they can back this up here and, and pull off a road win so uh the fighting marcus satterfields are in our second game they're five and four uh terror the maryland terrapins are also five and four because they've been getting destroyed in the big 10 right now this is a new game on peacock Maryland only a two and a half point favorite on the road at Nebraska. Nebraska playing well, but did lose to Michigan State last week. Yeah, how did so, that make you feel when, when Maryland lost to Northwestern? Yeah, pretty tough. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, pretty tough. So, I mean, you think about it, look, look at the skid Maryland's been on. Lost to Ohio State, lost to Illinois, lost to Northwestern, lost to Penn State. And lost to Illinois by a field one, one of those should, makes sense. You should. But, Two, I give you two of them there. Yeah, two of them. You should have been sorry. You should have lost to Penn State by forty. They couldn't even put up forty on Indiana. Well, you know, they, they actually hung pretty well with uh, with Ohio State for the first like for the first half, maybe first ten minutes of the third quarter. But after that, was that Ohio the game State, we were watching? That's the game? game we were watching in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the Ohio State bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and after halftime. After halftime, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 They they hung with them for a little bit. Maryland was playing pretty good, pretty good football there. I'll, I'll just die on the Maryland cross. I love Talia. I think he's a good quarterback. It's just Maryland's defense, man. Like as bad as we like to knock Marcus Satterfield for being a bad offensive coordinator, he's probably putting up forty this week on Maryland's defense. That's how bad they are. So I'll take Maryland. We couldn't do it here when we had talent. So I don't know what makes you think Nebraska's gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna take Maryland too, but I, don't, I just don't. I don't. I don't trust Marcus Satterfield. At all. Mm. Something you need to see. I like I bad mouth them. I think against Purdue, saying they wouldn't like Purdue would gonna walk the floor with them. Yeah. They go out and beat them by twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But. Actually, give me Nebraska at home. I'm going to take Nebraska at home. The fighting Satterfield, here's his chance to catch up on you. I'm going to take Nebraska at home. I, I thought the last three weeks, two of them, <clears throat> um, well, Northwestern, I figured they should have won. Purdue, I didn't think they were going to win. And then, I don't know, I've just kind of been been back and forth on them yeah, this year. I don't, I, 
it is what it is, man. Like, I, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong the way Maryland's been playing the last four weeks. So, since the Maryland twice, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So can't tell you I'm not playing them this week. So, uh, number eight, Alabama. They're eight and one. Obviously, they're on the road at six and three. Kentucky. This is a noon game. People are calling this a trap game. This line has fluctuated a little bit. Alabama, eleven point favorite right now. Bama fans, I've talked to this week. They're a little mm-hmm. scared. A little nervous. Roll tide. Yeah. Roll tide. <laughs> I, they beat LSU. They beat they beat, they beat Ole Miss. I mean, they've proven to be the better team. You know, and like we always say, you, you put your trust in saving. So, roll tide. Yeah, Bam, Bam, I think all the way across the board here. Chris, I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't trust I don't trust Kentucky. They've been so up and down this year. I don't trust Kentucky. I, I'm with it. I think it's a sleepy game because it's a noon game in Kentucky, 45 degrees. Like, this can be – I understand where the trap game mentality is coming from from a lot of people. Devin Leary likes to upset a team every once in a while uh, through his NC State career. So, We'll see. I mean, yeah, but I don't. I don't think this is. I say I don't think this is the week for that upset. But I would, I would take them plus the points here. Yeah. If you were an upset, I would. I think Auburn has a better chance of beating Alabama than than Kentucky does. We'll find out. That game, that rivalry game, is always tough. So So, I think Auburn has a better chance than Kentucky. Yeah. I think Alabama's played well, in my opinion, against the run, which I think is the big key here. Well, that's all Kentucky really has right now is the run game. Yeah. And Alabama's been able, outside of Jaden Daniels, until they concussed him. Yeah. uh, Which was an illegal hit, by the way. I don't know how that guy never never got ejected. That's a different story. You know, they couldn't stop Jaden Daniels. They could stop. They could stop the running back, but they could stop their quarterback. So. So I just you know I think it I think it will be a little bit of an interesting game here I, I I'm with Adam I think I probably will take the points so uh, Adam rolling back to you we got Utah and Washington Washington is a nine and a half point favorite at home against Utah obviously it's Utah number eighteen in the country seven and two Washington number five in the country right now nine and zero oh. um, really really good defense here versus a really good offense um, but I'm going to take Washington at home. Um, I think you you've proven it week in and week out at Washington that they can they can hang with the big dogs of the Pac-12. In this case, being USC, being Oregon, I think those are your two big biggest wins. And I mean, Oregon came down to a what field goal? Yep, field goal. So I mean, you had a really good back and forth game there. Oregon has has a good defense, so you can you've shown you can put up points on a good defense. And I, I think Utah has a good defense, but I think Washington will be able to pull this out at home. Yeah. I, I, I like Utah's chances in this. I think if there's a trap game, this, and it probably I guess it shouldn't be considered a trap game. This is two top 25 teams, but Utah, like you mentioned, is without a doubt the best defense Washington will face this year. Maybe Oregon, I'll give you credit for. I just don't know that Utah has. The, the offensive firepower to stay with Washington, but you just know, you know it's coming. You know Washington is going to blow one of these games, and maybe it was the Arizona State game, maybe it was the Stanford game. You know, maybe they got by with Oregon, maybe they got by with Arizona. I just, you know, that one of these games is going to be a game where Washington slips up. This one makes a little sense, but I'm with you. I'll, I'll ride the Washington Huskies right now. I, I, I just don't see it being done without Cameron Rising, though. I you agree. Know. I just don't think Utah has the offense. I'm with you there. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna ride the Huskies. I think. This game being at home in Washington really helps Washington. If this was in Utah, I think you might have a better chance for an upset. Yeah. But I think with this being in Utah, or I'm sorry, in Washington, I think it's a better – I think the, the Huskies come out on top. Yeah. Well, what may end up being the toughest game of the week for us, number 13, Tennessee, number 14, Missouri. Both these teams are 7-2, and 3-2 and two in the conference. Tennessee a one-point favorite on the road at Missouri. Mm. I yeah, have fun. Yeah, I kind of struggle with this a little bit. I've gone back and forth. I, you know, Alabama was a big, big loss for Tennessee. Since then, they beat Kentucky. They beat UConn. Missouri, obviously, coming off that it's close UConn. game. I know. Uh, Missouri coming off that close game with Georgia. Beat South Carolina. Beat Kentucky. Lost to LSU. I mean, Missouri has played really, really well this season. So it's a little hard. Um, the problem that I have with Missouri is I feel like. Cook kind of reverted back to his old self last week against Georgia. He wasn't playing lights out football. I don't know if it's just because of the defense that he was playing against, because it is Georgia. But he did, he kind of reverted back last week a little bit. He took a step back from what he's been doing for this season. This is a tough game, man. This is this is such a tough game because I feel like 
that home crowd in Missouri does make a difference. Like, it's much crap as I want to give Missouri mm -hmm. about being the team in the SEC nobody cares about. Like, they they do actually have a decent crowd for a 3:30 CBS game. So, um, shit. Nah, give me Tennessee. Give me Tennessee. I just I feel it in my bones that Tennessee's winning this game. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think this is a tough game. I think this would be a different story if it was being in Tennessee, but this being a one-point game, because Missouri has been playing so well at home this year. I mean, they took LSU to the brink at home. They took, you know, they did play Georgia fairly well last week. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to ride with, with Tennessee on this as well. I think Milton will have – Milton can, can put the ball downfield, I think, better than Cook can. Give me Mizzou. Yeah. I I like what they got going up on offense. Um, I think they play – you got arguably a top two, top three receiver in the NCAA this year. Yeah. And is it Bowden? Bowden, yeah. Yep. And even – I mean, their running back's playing well. True, yeah. So I – I think you got some really good complimentary football. I think they played very well as of a, a balanced attack here. Um, and I, I think Tennessee's defense can be exposed. And through, the, through the passing game, for sure. Yeah. I, I think you can definitely And so I think, you, I think you're going to see a highlight of some of one of the top wide receivers going off this week. No. And so I, I, I see Mizzou being able to get it done against Tennessee at home and like like you alluded to it is a Mizzou's just a tough place to play and I, I mean I get watching it not only as a South Carolina fan but seeing other teams go to Mizzou and still struggle in Mizzou it just makes it it just seems like a very tough place to play yeah so I, I will take Mizzou here okay at home I don't blame you I don't blame you uh, Keith, we're on to the Rutgers Iowa game. Uh, Rutgers six and three. Iowa number twenty two in the country, seven and two. Iowa is a one and a half point favorite at home. Scroll up a little bit. Yeah. See their are their stats. Where their stats at? That's the stats. They don't. Uh, they don't. ESPN they don't, doesn't give you the. I thought they gave the breakdown. They the used to. I don't know yeah. what happened to that. No. Um. I don't know. I mean, I just I turn them off. Just make it harder. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, what what kills me here is the simple fact that Rutgers knows how to put up points, but Iowa has such a good defense that they just they you know they keep everybody down. They don't have Cade McNamara, which really hurts them on the offensive side of the ball. Um, give me Iowa at home. Yeah, it's a tough place. To Take play. the under. Take the under. Take the under. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you Take what, the under. I'll tell, the under. I'll tell you what the under is in just a second. Three thirty game in Iowa. The over under twenty eight and a half. Take a the new, under. New, a new record. Take the under. Half. So, uh, as really, yeah, twenty well, yep, twenty eight oh, and a half. Have you seen how many points Iowa scores? I understand that. But I, Iowa has Iowa has by themselves. Iowa has won their last couple games, uh, ten seven. They've lost twelve ten, and then they have won fifteen to six. So none of those would have met that over. I understand that. <laughs> Iowa, Iowa. That's what I'm saying. Aim with the under. Actually, any of their last four games because they beat Purdue twenty to fourteen. So none of those games. That's thirty four. That's thirty four. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Matt Hoyt. Yeah. Matt, uh, Matt, Matt, be hard today. Um. I don't know. I, just, I agree. I was plays really good defense. It an explosive offense by no means. They just played very well at home. But I think Rutgers has been playing really good ball this season and has the ability to put up a lot of points here. Um, I'm going to take Rutgers on the road here. I thought I was going to be the only one, but I'm going to be with you. Um, I, I like what Greg Schiano is doing over there at Rutgers right now. It is... I mean, program changing, and they have a balanced offense. They play decent defense. They don't make mistakes. They are okay in the special teams. Iowa's defense, without a question, to me, is number one, is the number one defense in the country. They, ha I mean, they have to lay blood, sweat, tears, guts all on the line every single play because they know if they give up a touchdown, their team's probably losing. And so, it's really, really impressive what they've had to do on defense, especially the last four weeks. And so. It's going to be a tough place to play, and it's going to be you know a good game with seventy thousand people in Iowa. But I think Rutgers walks away with it. Mm -hmm. So, 
All right, Adam, back to you. We got Texas State and Coastal. Coastal at home is a uh, one-point dog to the Texas State Bobcats. Texas State obviously making one of the most historic changes um, so far in college football, going from a one-win team last year to six and three right now uh, on the road at Coastal, 3.30 on Saturday. So I haven't loved the way Coastal's played this year. Um, I think Grayson McCall has kind of been underwhelming. We, you know, you were expecting a little bit more from him this year. I don't think he's having a bad year, but you were just expecting a little bit more. Um, but give me, give me Coastal at home. I think they're on. A, they figured something out over the last four weeks. They're on a four-game win streak, and I, I think they keep it rolling here against Texas State. Yeah, this is this is a really tough game to pick. I own Texas State. Really, just cool to watch their transition this year. A lot of transfers. Thirty-seven transfers come in for them. One of them being T.J. Finley, an old Auburn and LSU quarterback. T.J.'s been fantastic. The problem is Texas State's defense is also really, really bad. They're in the top, or they're in their bottom like thirty defenses in all of college football. So the down of Carolina. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> both, both, both USC's actually. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think you hit the hammer on the nail, though. I think Grayson McCall has been very average this year. Ten touchdowns, six interceptions, hasn't been able to run the ball great. Their offense just doesn't look the same without, you know, uh, without Jamie Chadwell. And so, I'm I'm going to take Texas State on the road. I just think that they maybe they pull this one off here. They've been this week. No, no. <laughs> but they're just in that way. No, but they're so they're so inconsistent. That you just never know what you're going to get, right? I mean, they, they beat Louisiana Monroe, one of the worst teams in college football, by one point a couple weeks ago. And then Georgia Southern, who's been pretty much one of the top three teams in the Sun Belt this year, they blew them out by 20 last week. So you just never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Chris. I'm, I'm going to write TJ Finley here. I'm going to write the ex, ex Auburn quarterback to go out and, with with the knowledge or knowing that Jim, that Jimmy Chadwell is gone and that Grace McCall has not been performing as he as he has the last four years. I mean, he's definitely not been the same the same guy that he's been. So um, I, I think Texas State has been one of the more remarkable turnarounds for this for this season. So I'm, I'm going to ride with them as well. Yeah, DJ Keen, their uh, head coach slash offensive coordinator, former Tulsa quarterback in the uh, mid-2000s there. Mm -hmm. Dude was a star. Look him up. Uh, is it me? It's me, yeah. Auburn, Ar yeah. Auburn Arkansas? Okay. Uh, we got five and four Auburn, two and four in the conference. At three and six Arkansas, one and five in the conference. Four o'clock on Saturday. Arkansas in Fayetteville at home, a two and a half point favorite. Um, this one's not complicated for me. Arkansas sucks, so give me uh, give me Auburn. Yeah, I'm going Auburn too. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, Arkansas just is a horrible team. I mean, listen, they they beat Florida at Florida in overtime last week. Phenomenal we should we should be Florida. Yeah, phenomenal win for them, but um, but also I mean they KJ, up, they Jefferson, KJ Jefferson has also un, been underperforming for me this year. They put up three Rocket points on Mississippi State. Yeah, Rocket three. Sanders and KJ Jefferson. I don't know what happened, but it's falling apart over there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think Rocket Sanders even playing. Half time is not. Well, yeah, he's not even playing. KJ KJ's been god awful. At, at that when when he's lead, the leading rusher for the team. And he, of course, if he, hell, if he could throw it to himself, he probably would. Um, I understand that KJ's trying to lay, you know, do everything he can That's for that team. Yeah. But, um, that, yeah, I think he's just underperformed again. I think he had a high two years ago, was average last year, and it's just kind of steadily gone downhill. And I agree, Arkansas has just played really bad this year. Give me all as well. Okay. Is Sam Pittman in the hot seat? He should be. Okay. He should be. Um, all right, two huge games, playoff implications, the whole nine here. We got number three Michigan, 9-0, and on the road to Penn State, number 10 in the country. They're 8-1. Penn State's only lost, obviously, Ohio State uh, by eight a couple weeks ago. Michigan is a four-and-a-half-point favorite for the big noon kickoff here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to ride old Captain Kekka pants until, until they – until they prove me wrong, or prove everybody in the country wrong, or they get their so who's captain, captain, who's captain, captain Vance? Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, Jim yeah. Harbaugh. Yeah, you probably should say that, by the way. Michigan. Thank you. But until, uh, you know, un until... I mean, I knew who you were talking yeah, about, but, you know, we got Until they, until they, uh, until the NCAA comes in and strips them of all their wins this season, I'm going to run with them, so. No. Uh, give me Michigan as well. Um, this is... 
I just think their defense is better. They're, they've got J.J. McCarthy, who's been playing lights out. Definitely much better than the, than the freshman at Penn State, who I think is going to have a good, a solid career as he progresses in his in his tenure there. He just, he just needs another year. Right. I think he just needs another year. Penn State plays good defense, but agreed. I think think Michigan has it going on all cylinders right now, and, well, I, mean, I, and I like what they I like what they got going on. Um, I'm also playing from a better chart here. I got them winning the Big Ten. That well, probably, Michigan. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, Chris, that. as you always I need say, that for my future. You know, you always <laughs> want someone with a good quarterback and either a good receiver or a good running back. Yeah. Michigan's got one of the like, top running like backs in the country in, yeah. in McCorum, and they have JJ McCarthy, who's been playing really good, solid football this year. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, I own Michigan. I'm playing them for sure. I think the you know. Why wouldn't you? They don't have a loss. <laughs> yeah, and I think the thing for me was all about. Like when I saw Michigan and said, "This is the team I want to draft this year," the thing for me was the veteran quarterback and the veteran running back, right? And of course, they added pieces in the offseason through the transfer portal to their defense to make it even better. I I love this. I mean, I just don't. I don't think Penn State can hang with Michigan. I think from what I saw, the Penn State that played against Ohio State, which is clear competition. They, they, they don't they don't have it. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't pass the ball more than 10 yards on the field. They're the third best team in the Big Ten, but there is a big difference between Ohio State and Michigan and them. No, absolutely. Right? I agree. And but I, I, think, I think Penn State can get there. It's just they have oh, to. Sure. They, need, they need to take the time. with The, with the, the quarterback needs, needs to be able to progress a little bit more, and they need to get some more pieces to go around yeah. him, and they'll be there. I agree with you. Aller is an incredible quarterback. He's an 18-year-old freshman, and he's 20 touchdowns to one interception. Or 19 by by this age probably, but he's 20 touchdowns and one interception. This kid's phenomenal at such a young age, but he's also not a superstar quarterback that can keep you in a game. He's not a Caleb Williams. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have that. So, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. He'll be there though. So, He'll be there. Uh, so Michigan all around here on the board. So uh, Adam, you got the final one. We got Georgia. We got Ole Miss. This is number nine Ole Miss, eight and one. And, Going to number two Georgia, who's nine and zero. This will be in Georgia. This will be a night game. It is on ESPN. Uh, Georgia, a ten and a half point favorite currently at Sanford Stadium. I have to say, I don't, I don't think this should be close. Um, Georgia, I think walks away with it. Um, they just, they get it done. It might not always be the prettiest, but they get it done. Um, and so until until somebody can prove me wrong, I think I think Georgia's the team to beat still. Uh, I understand. I mean, I know where they have them at in the standings, and I think it's you, you kind of have you definitely have played a weaker schedule this year. Georgia has, but until until you can prove me otherwise, I still think this is the team to beat. I just feel like. I feel like Ole Miss has quietly been the third best team in the SEC this year. I think I think there was a lot of talk about Georgia, a lot of talk about Alabama, a lot of talk about LSU, but Ole Miss has beat had LSU. such a good team, beat LSU, and has just kind of quietly been in there. Except this one is, week I wanted to take them, they lost. Uh, it was the Bama. They lost to Bama. They lost to Bama. We all took Ole Miss. Yeah. I still feel the same way about Ole Miss's offense. I still think they are the best offense in the SEC. I just don't know. If they can score enough points to beat Georgia, right? Like if I think in my mind, if this game gets into the 30s, Ole Miss wins. If somebody scores 30 points, it's and it's Ole Miss. Georgia's not catching them. But if Ole Miss can't get to that 30 point line, they're probably going to lose a 27-24 game. So um, I'm just going to stay the same way we have been with Alabama and some other teams. I'm to prove it to me. So I'll take yeah. Georgia as well. You got to ride Georgia in this. I mean, yeah. Like like like. Adam said they are until someone beats them they probably are the best team in college football right now even if there are better teams out there potentially until someone beats them you can't really argue against them they haven't lost in two years yeah we might yeah so going on three years so I mean you know you can't really argue against it but yeah I'm gonna I'm stick with Georgia on this one okay well that folks is our week 11 college football picks as always hit us in the comments let us know who you think is going to win these games and we appreciate you to like comment subscribe